know, I'm not qualified in anything. I just live with the condition which I think is what qualifies me. Um, so I'm 18 and I have Ellis Danlos syndrome, which is a genetic connective tissue disorder. It basically affects the collagen, which is the glue that holds your body together. So in me, it affects almost every organ system in the body. Um, it causes joint dislocations um, or partial dislocations on a daily basis. Um, it also causes soft velvety skin, which can be nice on your face, but everywhere else when it just rips and tears, that's not quite as enjoyable. <laughs> um, and I have problems with most of my organs. So my bladder stopped working about two years ago, so now I self catheterize that six times a day. And um, on New Year's Eve, I got an ileostomy bag placed um, because my bowel stopped working and there was no other choice. So my stomach is also paralysed, um, so eating isn't quite that fun for me. And at the moment, we're waiting, in, waiting to get a gastric pacemaker, which is basically where they put a pacemaker in your stomach and it makes your muscles work. Um, so I also have problems with my central nervous system, which they call, call dysautonomia. It causes um, fainting. If anything that you don't think about, like blood pressure breathing, all of that sort of stuff doesn't tend to work properly. Um, so EDS affects everyone differently. Um, I have what they call a severe form of EDS, um, but there's other people that go, can go through their whole lives never knowing that they have EDS, they're just more prone to dislocations or whatever. And then there's people like me who you end up in a wheelchair or your organs stop working and you know, we never know what's going to happen next. Every day um, I wake up and I don't know if I'm going to end up in hospital by that night. Um, so I was diagnosed when I was nine because no doctor believed mum and I that I was actually sick. I was labelled with attention seeking Mum was called neurotic, that's actually on my hospital file, which is nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just ended, it was only when I went to a pediatric rheumatologist who specialised in EDS and he, all he had to do was read my history and touch my skin and he knew I had Ellis Dandel syndrome. Um, so it's, if you know what to look for, it's not hard to diagnose, it's just if you don't know what to look for and you don't add up issues together because there's a rheumatologist and then there's a gastroenterologist or other doctors and they don't talk to each other. So they don't link up the issues. They deal with one part of your body and that's it. Um, being a young person with chronic illness is tough. Um, I never know whether I am going to be able to sit up in bed or whether I will have to stay in bed the whole day or whether I can get up and go out. Um, some days there's stuff I want to go to, like today, and until I wake up that morning I don't know how my body is going to handle it and um, if I push myself too hard that leaves me bedridden for a few days. Um, there is a theory called the sperm theory. It's basically where every morning you have a certain amount of sperm, so say 10. And then for every activity you do, you get one taken away. So when you ask someone, oh, what do you do in the morning? Oh, I get up and go to get ready. It's like, no, you don't. You sit up on the edge of the bed and you have to figure out whether a joint dislocated in the night that you, know, you haven't quite registered yet. Um, then I have to drink water before I can get out of bed. I have to have my tablets. I have to get showered by mum, it's not a simple, I get up and get ready, you know, it's, people think that when they get up in the morning, they just get ready, it's, you know, there's that thing that most people don't have to think about, and that's not wrong of you, you know, you've never lived anything different, but when you have a friend with a chronic illness, or know someone with a chronic illness, you've got to register that, oh yeah, it's not as simple as I think it is. Um, even though I have this condition, I try and do what I can. I love to raise awareness of Ellis-Danlos syndrome through public speaking. I've 
spoken to many events, including the Variety Ball a couple of weeks ago. Um, my biggest hobby is makeup. <laughs> um, so I go out with a support worker once a fortnight. I used to go twice a week, but as my health has deteriorated, I've had to cut back. Um, I usually go shopping so that mum can't see the makeup I buy. <laughs> um, and having independence. <laughs> <laughs> Having independence, even if it's a very different sort of independence than the independence you think of, um, is really important. You know, being able to go out, like, I'm 18, I'm not going to get a licence, I'm not going to work, I'm, you know, the independence I have is being to go out for a couple of hours, even if it's with someone else that is there to support me, but I think all of the support workers feel more like friends than they do support workers, you know. Most of them are caring and you do really get matched to the person that suits you most. So, you know, it's one of those things where even though it's a therapy service, it is also a group of friends. Um, so mum is my full-time carer. I can't be left alone because we never know when I'm going to have a seizure or just like a cater joint that I won't be able to get back in. Um, mum has to dress me, brush my hair, shower me, cut up my food, help me in and out of the car. Um, the past few years I've deteriorated a lot before I was could live a semi-normal life. I still live a semi-normal life but it's not your description of a semi-normal life. Um, so yeah, it's it's not just um, a condition that affects your body, you know, you have chronic fatigue syndrome, um, so getting out of bed every day is hard, you know, there's all these things that you don't think about and taking care of my health can be a full-time job. Everyone always says, oh, what do you do for work? It's like, I'm a professional patient, you know, that's pretty much what I am, um, you know, because I have to book doctor's appointments, I have to um, do stomach care catheters, um, doctor's appointments, which you're meant to have, you go, go and sit at Charlie's for three hours for a five minute appointment. So if you go there, you know you're there all day. Um, I can't change my condition, I can only try and turn it into a positive. You know, I have two choices. I can either sit in bed and give up, or I can try and raise awareness and help others. Um, the independence from going on supports is important. It helps me to, you know, to do things that I wouldn't be able to do. Um, and this condition isn't all bad. I've met people I never would have met. I've got friends with EDS. I've got friends from therapy services and I never would have met them had it not been for having EDS. So as much as I hate living in pain, you know, I don't really want to change my life if it means losing all my friends, you know. So, um, yeah, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on what it is like to live with a genetic condition. And there's more to me than the genetic condition, but it does affect every part of my life. Um, yeah, but I'm more than happy for questions. I'm, it's pretty, most things are not off limits for me. So, you know, feel free to ask questions.